One of the most fascinating facets of video games compared to other art forms is that they're potentially fluid and ever-changing, so developers can deliver patches which fix bugs and add content for as long as they feel compelled to support said game. But it also stands to reason that some developers don't know when to stop tinkering, or rather can't read the room and appreciate when a change might not go down well with their loyal paying fanbase. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 baffling changes video games made after release. Number 10. Removing the Jacqueline Natla tease, Shadow of the Tomb Raider On the day of Shadow of the Tomb Raider's release, developer Eidos Montreal dropped a day one patch, which in addition to fixing various bugs and so forth, actually made a change to the game's ending that was pretty major. Those who were able to play a physical copy of the game ahead of release or played through it without downloading the patch were able to watch the different original post credits scene, which teed up a distinct direction for Lara Croft's next adventure. The original credits scene saw Lara sat in Croft Manor as she received a letter sent by Jacqueline Natla, the antagonist of the original Tomb Raider, which implied that the next game in the reboot franchise would likely be a reimagining of the original game. Except the day one patch removed the reference to Natla entirely, leaving the nature of Lara's future tomb raiding very much up in the air. Now you could say there's a clear point to this if the developers decided to ditch the idea, but given that Crystal Dynamics announced earlier this year the next Tomb Raider will unify all three existing timelines, the Natla reference absolutely makes sense as a lead-in to the original game. Number 9. Forcing players into a heterosexual relationship – Assassin's Creed Odyssey Upon initial release, Assassin's Creed Odyssey was praised for its inclusion of same-sex relationships, only for Ubisoft to misguidedly override this with the game's legacy of the first Blade, Shadow Heritage DLC, which released a few months later. This DLC ignores all sexuality preferences up until this point and forces players to both romance and have a child with a member of the opposite sex, either the son or daughter of Persian rebel Darius, depending on whether the player is playing as Alexios or Cassandra. Given that Ubisoft had made considerable noise about the game's romantic options pre-release, many in the LGBT community felt betrayed by the DLC's railroading. The criticism proved vocal enough that Ubi eventually released a patch to change the sequence in question, while also alternating the accompanying achievement to no longer be centered around starting a family. The fact that Ubi didn't see this coming when they first dropped the DLC is utterly baffling. Number 8. Replacing Small Potatoes with Trivial – Persona 5 Royal Sometimes developers make minor enough changes to a game they probably think players won't ever notice. But of course, there's always somebody who does, and takes to social media to voice their amusement. Case in point, we have Persona 5 Royal, which roughly two months after its Western release, released a patch that fixed a number of bugs, but also secretly altered a single line of dialogue. Fans may remember a moment where Adachi calls Joker spineless, and one of the three dialogue options players could make in response was, this isn't small potatoes. The rather goofy line quickly became something of a meme among the Persona fandom, but the aforementioned patch bafflingly altered it to instead read, this isn't trivial. While you can argue the changed line better suits the serious tone of the conversation, fans had latched onto the small potatoes line enough at this point that changing it seemed totally unnecessary, even cruel. If players can embrace a strange eccentricity like this, then developers should too. And I mean, it's Persona, it's all eccentricity. In fact, the change annoyed one player enough they even created a mod that restored the original starchy one-liner to the game. So there you go. Number 7. Turning Drugs Into Bananas – Final Fantasy Legend 2 the first of two peculiar Final Fantasy related changes on our list, with the English language version of Final Fantasy Legend 2, released almost an entire year after the Japanese one. In the Edo section of the game, players are tasked with bringing down a criminal enterprise that's smuggling bananas. Yeah. As bizarre as this might seem, it's believed to be a change mandated by Nintendo when they localized the game for its Western release. In the original Japanese version, the gangsters are actually smuggling prohibited opium. But because this evidently wouldn't fly in North America and beyond, it was swiftly subbed out for bananas. While not including narcotics in a game aimed at children isn't entirely illogical, why replace opium with bananas? Is there no middle ground between illegal drugs and totally harmless fruit? Could it not have been cigarettes or some other contraband? You let us know what you think. Number 6. Releasing a banter reduction patch – Forspoken 
One of the most common complaints about last year's action RPG Forspoken was that the in-game banter between protagonist Frey and her sentient bracelet cuff was too cutesy and quippy for its own good, like somebody vomiting Marvel Cinematic Universe one-liners at you ad nauseum. And even though the game actually launched with a slider allowing players to adjust the banter between Frey and Cuff, Square Enix nevertheless followed up by releasing a patch which altered the inherent frequency and content of the banter during open world activities. The catch? They did this four months after the game's release to support a DLC drop, long after Forspoken had flopped at retail and more or less evaporated out of the public consciousness. Given that the only people still playing the game at this point were probably the diehard fans who actually enjoyed the banter, dialing down the default chit chat so long after the horses bolted, that is most potential customers have sacked it off, was a totally head scratching move. Number 5. Removing the Secret Dev Room – Sports Story Golf Story follow-up Sports Story was given a rather low-profile release in late 2022, with players soon discovering the presence of a secret dev room, effectively a hidden game developer's office in which employees talk about the troubled production they're working on. The room was widely interpreted to be referring to Sports Story itself, which was delayed numerous times throughout development and launched to poor reviews, citing an overabundance of bugs and pervasive performance issues. Once word got out, however, developer Sidebar Games released a patch which blocked access to the room entirely, which in a classic case of the Streisand effect only shone an even brighter light on the matter. Enraged fans upset about the jank riddled state of the game took to social media to question why Sidebar was spending time covering up employee discontent rather than, you know, getting it into a workable state for paying customers. Number 4. Patching in sound and subtitles – The Quiet Man Patching a game to clarify the player's understanding should seem like a net positive, right? But The Quiet Man is no ordinary game, an action-adventure title in which players control a deaf protagonist, resulting in most of the game unfolding with minimal sound and unsubtitled dialogue. In theory, that's a really interesting idea. By placing players in the shoes of a deaf character and forcing them to experience the world as he does, they'd have to rely on other senses and intuit visual cues to make sense of the crime thriller story. But the spectacular spectacularly bungled story execution left most players and critics simply scratching their heads at the utter incomprehensibility of it all. A week after release, developer Human Head Studios dropped an answered patch which restored sound and subtitles to the experience, allowing players to finally figure out what the hell was going on. Except there wasn't exactly a sizable queue of players willing to replay the dreadfully dull three-hour experience to get answers to a story they weren't even remotely invested in. More to the point, it kind of undercuts the game's deaf protagonist gimmick to suddenly give us a sensory upgrade after the fact. Given that The Quiet Man was a critical and commercial dud right out the gate, the developers were probably better off just leaving it be. At least without sound and subtitles, we can live in a world where maybe the story's interesting and now we know it's not. Number 3. Changing the Drunk Man into a Coffee Fiend – Pokemon Red and Blue in the same vein as Final Fantasy magically transforming opium into bananas, we now have this peculiar content change in Pokemon Red and Blue. In Viridian City, players can stumble across an old man lying on a path, blocking their way forward. In the original Japanese release, the man is passed out drunk, and only after delivering a parcel to Professor Oak does he sober up, get over his hangover, and move along. But for the Western release, the man was changed from a boozer into a caffeine abuser, as after you deliver Professor Professor Oak's parcel, he'll explain he was caffeine deprived but now feels much better after getting a cup of java down him. Even accepting how fiercely protective of their branding Nintendo of America is, it's a thoroughly daft change. One drunk man in a Pokemon game isn't gonna ruin kids' lives, and even if the change had to be made, could they really not think of a better solve than caffeine fiend? Even the most caffeine dependent among us surely draws the line at just giving up and passing out in the street, right? Right? I don't know. I don't like going without my Coke Zero. Maybe this is a good way to go. Number 2. Changing the final line. Final Fantasy VII Remake 
On February 26 of this year, three days before the release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Square Enix released a patch for the first game in the remake project, which fans discovered made a most peculiar change to the very final line spoken in the game. For almost four years, the closing line spoken by Aerith was, I miss it, the steel sky. But now the line has been changed to, this sky, I don't like it. Fans were immediately left baffled by such a trivial change to a scene firmly cemented in the minds of millions, and the fact that Square Enix didn't mention the change in their patch log made it all the fishier. The consensus is that the new line lacks the punch and even basic poetry of the original, suggesting that Square Enix just didn't know when to stop tinkering with the damn thing. Considering the time and money that had to be spent re-recording the line, it's a bizarre amount of effort to put into a change so menial, and one that fans were so predictably going to hate anyway. Number 1. Adding a golden shower to the ending. Wanted Weapons of Fate. In case you weren't aware, yes, yeah, somebody made a sequel video game to 2008's James McAvoy starring action flick Wanted. Third person shooter Wanted Weapons of Fate was initially released for mobile platforms in June 2008, mere days after the film's release, while the console and PC versions landed in spring of 2009. But publisher Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment made one bizarre change to the PC release of the game. In the mobile and console versions, Weapons of Fate ends with antagonists the immortal being shot in the face by protagonist Wesley. On PC, however, this was altered to instead have the bullets miss the immortal's head before Wesley unzips and straight up pisses all over the villain's face. The end. While on one hand that's absolutely in line with the edgy juvenile style of Mark Miller's Wanted comics, it does feel decidedly less satisfying than seeing a bullet cram right through the immortal's cranium. More to the point, why make this change only on the PC version of the game? 